All right, in this video, we are going to learn how to place these decimals on a number line. Now, why is this important? Just yesterday, I was working with students who absolutely successfully could arrange decimals in order from least to greatest. And essentially what they were doing is they were lining up the decimal and then they were looking at the tenths Place, and then they would know which number was smaller than the others. And then if there was a tie, they would look next door to the hundredths place and then as needed. And that, that's and, and essentially they went through this process of alphabetizing the numbers. And with essentially 100% accuracy, they were able to sort these decimals from least to greatest. But then when I asked them to place those same decimals on a number line, all heck broke loose and the decimal the numbers were being placed in random places on the number line and what it taught me was that we were teaching students how to get an answer sorting decimals without actually teaching students what decimals were so this video we're going to show students how to place these decimals on a number line, which automatically will then allow students to compare two decimals or to sort them in order from least to greatest or greatest to least. So let's get started on this. And we've got these three decimals, 0 0.7, 0 0.115, and 0 0.23. Yes, some teachers and parents are going to say, that's not 0 0.7, that's really supposed to be 7 tenths. And that is absolutely true. Um, but I'm not going to worry about uh, being all academic language because really what I want is to get to the meaning of these numbers. Even if students are using academic language, it doesn't mean they understand the meaning of these numerals. So let's do that. Um, because I see that my smallest, all of these numbers are less than one whole, I'm going to make my number line go from zero on the left to one on the right. So now we know that all three of these numbers live somewhere in this number line. All right, so now, in no particular order, let's just start with 0 0.7. All right, so that first decimal place right there, that first decimal place is called the tenths. All right, and basically what that means, in fact, there's my tenths right here, and there's my tenths right there. All right, so 0 0.7, that's seven being in the tenths place means I need to cut the interval from 0 to 1 into 10 equal sized pieces and then move over 7 of those pieces. So I'm going to start by estimating half and we know that half is 0 0.5 so 5 tenths, 5 out of those 10 pieces and then I'm going to just kind of guesstimate my 5 intervals on the left one, two, three, four, five, and then again, five intervals on the right. And so now I know that these are labeled 0 0.1, 0 0.2, or 0 and 3 tenths, and uh, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and 0 0.9, or 9 tenths. And then of course we have 10 tenths, which would look like this. It would not look like this. A lot of students want to say that. No, that's that's one tenth. Uh, so 10 tenths. We might have to remind students that 10 tenths is a fraction, 10 out of 10, which is one whole. So where does this 0 0.7 live? Well, it means we're going to move over 7 tenths tenths and when we move over seven tenths we can see that it lives right there so that is where 0 0.7 lives zero and seven tenths so now if we're going to take care of this 0 0.115 so we know that it's it lives in the neighborhood of the one tenths right here and how do we know that? Because we can see that that first decimal place is, the t is one tenth. 
So it lives somewhere in this neighborhood right here. Now, that next place value, which is called the hundredths, hundredths, means, this is crazy, it means we have to chop up this interval into 10 equal size pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> oh my goodness. And that one right here means we need to move over one of those pieces. And then the five means we're supposed to move over half of the next one. Oh my goodness. So there is right here is my uh, 0 0.11. And then we need to move over half. So 0 0.15 is right about, uh, oops, 0 0.115 is right about there. That is just crazy right there. And then 0 0.23. So once again, we know that this is the hundredths place, hundredths place. And we know that we live, it lives somewhere in the neighborhood of the two tenths neighborhood. So here's the two tenths neighborhood. And then that three means we need to move over three additional tiny little hundredths. So I'm going to zoom in. And this time I'm going to see if I can make my pen a little bit thinner. And, and I know I need to move, cut this into 10 equal sized pieces and then move over three of those hundredths. And then, so that's one, two, three, right here <laughs> is 0 0.23. Three. So that is how we're going to learn how to place these decimals on a number line. You're going to be thinking about place value, but you're going to represent it on a number line um, so that students are, are able to compare these numbers or order these numbers because they understand where the numbers live on a number line. Now, once we've got them located on the number line, it is easy for us to recognize the numbers from least to greatest. We see that 0 0.115 is the least, 0 0.23 is next, and the greatest of the numbers is 0 0.17 or 7 tenths. So there we go. And now we can also compare these with the little alligator thing. And it's okay to use the alligator uh, because in order to use the alligator, you still have to know which number is bigger or smaller. It's okay to use a mnemonic like an alligator. I know some people have issues with that, uh, but I don't. The alligator is just the mnemonic to help us remember which way to point the alligator. Essentially, uh, to make sure it's pointing to the number that's bigger. Students still have to know which number is bigger. For example, if we want to compare 0 0.7 and 0 0.23 with one of those you know, alligator symbols, all I would have to do is go up here and look at my number line. And I can see that 0 0.23 is way to the left of 0 0.7, that means this number is smaller and this number is bigger, which means my alligator is going to eat the bigger number and it's going to face that way. So folks, the idea to be able to compare and uh, order these decimals, we don't want to teach students some trick like alphabetizing uh, numbers. Uh, that allows them to compare and order the numbers, but without having a deep and profound understanding of what these decimals mean in the first place. How do you do that? You just teach students how to place these numbers on a number line, and then we're killing multiple birds with one stone. Students learn what decimals are, but then because they know what decimals are and where they live on a number line, they now can compare and order decimals. 
And that wraps up this video. I would love to see your comments in the video section thingy thing below.